Alright, this is a tutorial on how to solve the Rubik's Revenge. Alright, or the 4x4 Rubik's Cube. Alright, if you can't solve a 3x3, I would recommend don't try to do this. This is a pretty challenging cube. You need to, you need to use a lot of logic in this. So if you really, you can't solve a 3x3, I really do not recommend trying to solve this. Alright. The method I'm going to teach you is called the cage method, alright? It's a method that's rarely used. However, it's, it doesn't require as much logic as the normal method. The normal method that most people use is they group all the centers together and all the edges together so it works as a 3x3, three three, and there they just twist all the outer layers until it's solved, alright? That's not how I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you the cage method, where basically you solve two centers, solve your corners, then then two sides, you then solve your remaining edges, and then the remaining centers. This generally generally is a longer approach, but it's much easier to learn. Uh, this could take you only a few days, while the normal method, to get fast in it, could take you months. Alright, so I'm going to teach you this method. It's the method I use when I solve it. Alright, first make sure your cube is pretty well scrambled. I'm just going to scramble mine a little more. It wasn't really... I just quickly scrambled this. Alright, it's a little bit more. Alright, and now what you can notice about the 4x4 four four is it does not have um, an actual center. Like, um, there's no actual center piece you can work off of. Technically, these are all center pieces, but there's no direct center like there is on the 3x3. Three when you have one direct center right here that everything rotates off of. So when I scramble it, I, will, I can always determine what side is which. On a 4x4, four four, any side can be any color, technically. So I look at this, I can make that my green side, I can make it my red, my yellow, my white, I can even make it my orange or my blue. I can make it any side I want. However, once you start uh, choosing side colors, you have to make sure it stays in regular order. What I mean is like on a 3x3, three three, green, if green is on top and red is on front, you will know then that your left is yellow. Alright? It has to be. On your Rubik's Revenge, if you build, like, green here and red here, yellow will have to be here. However, you get to choose, technically, which size you want to be or want to start with. Alright, so here's how we're going to start. First step is all logic. Basically, you have to build an entire center. I'm going to do green, okay? You have to build an entire center of one color. This should be... Uh, all logic, there's really no algorithms for it. Alright, so start with any side that already has a green piece on it. If you have two, maybe some, if you had something like this, start with that. Start with as many pieces as you can. And here's what you're going to do. Generally, uh, there's not no real way to describe how to do this. You really can figure out your own way. But this is what I do. Alright? Alright. Hold on, first I just want to make sure. Should not take very many turns. Alright? That's how you get the green center. And I'm just gonna scramble it up and show you kind of what I did. Alright? Now, first off, um, uh, if you twist any of these faces, the, um, like the actual, the front, the up, the right, the left, the back down, whatever. Um, if you twist any of the outside faces, you're not going to affect any of the centers, because they're not, except for the U layer. Alright, that's the only layer that's going to affect it, but like, front, back, left, uh, right, left, they're not going to affect these centers here, because they are on the inside, not on the outside layers. Because of that, I can twist this, like, as much as I can, as much as I want, any of these sides. It's not going to screw up any progress I've made on the centers. If I do this, then it's just going to be... It's just going to change the look of the centers. All right? So here's what I like to do. I like to get, basically, um, a line like this. All right? I try to do that. And I try to get rid of any excess pieces that are here. So I try to get a green line like this. All right? Next, what you're going to do is you're going to have to pair up your other two centers like that. Like I have, this is going to be my green side up here. You have to pair up your other two centers so they look like this and put them up here. But as you know here, uh, they are not aligned. There's no way to get them in line just by twisting like the center layer like that. So what do you do? Very simple. You can twist these outer layers. Remember, if you twist these outer layers, the centers aren't going to be messed up. So watch, if I, I have it like this, 
All right, put it back like this. If I twist this side, it moves that center piece and lines it up. This is hard to explain, the logic parts of it. But building your first center shouldn't be too hard. You shouldn't really need a description on that. Now, this one, this one's a little trickier. All right, here's what you're going to do. Now, first off, do not twist your any of these two center layers right here. Do not twist them under any circumstances, unless I tell you to, because you are going to mess up your centers right here, and you don't want to mess that up. So, you're going to have to, once again, pair up two center pieces like this. Okay? You see, I haven't disturbed that. Just as long as you do not turn these two center slices, your center should not be harmed. Alright, you're going to have to pair up two edges like this. Alright, you don't put them on the top yet. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, you pair them up like so. And, uh, alright. This shouldn't, once again, it shouldn't be too hard. You can twist your sides, of course, and everything. Alright, once you get this, this is the tricky part. Um, you only have to do this when you already have uh, your opposite center soft. Alright, the thing is, if I immediately just twist that slice up like that, I got blue up there, but my green centers moved up. How can I possibly put get them down? Basically, here's the movement. To get them up, you twist your center slice up, so you got your pieces up like that. You have to put these back down. So, you have to move these two pieces out of the way. All right? It's kind of hard to explain, but as you can see, they're in the way. Like, if I twist it down, both pieces are going to be affected. If I twist the top layer twice, you see they're no longer on the same slice. Because of that, I can twist the slice back down. The green centers are okay, and I've got two blue centers up here. Um, I should have two more centers. If you have a blue center up here already, wait, I'm gonna. All right, let's say I want to set this up. Okay, let's say I have this. I've got my green center solved, I've got two lined up, but I have a blue center already up here. What you're going to do is when you twist this slice up, you're going to make sure this piece is not affected by turning the slice up. Alright? So it's right here, it's on the opposite slice. So you turn it up, turn the top twice, and twist it back down. Now you should have your two pieces up here, and your piece should have fallen down. Because, you need, you need to do that because you have to build another block like that, all right? And now, uh, to get this last one up, if I do the same thing in like the empty spot right here, if I twisted that up, twist it twice, and then put it back down, as you can see, nothing has happened. I've sw uh, switched these blocks, all right? So you can't do that. What you're gonna have to do, make sure that you have green, of course, green must still be solved, you have your block right there on an adjacent side, and on the top side, uh, another block. They must be on the same slice. Okay? So what you're going to do, twist the slice up. All right? Your, your pieces are going to be back here. They're going to be on your back face. Twist the top twice, and twist the slice down. You should have the blue center and the green center solved. All right? That's going to be it for this part. The next step is going to be putting on the corners, all right? That part shouldn't be too hard. But that is the... Oh, sorry, hit the camera. That is the Rubik's Revenge tutorial part one. Thanks for watching.